See, I'm believing for this revival that God is bringing, not just to bring a harvest of souls, but I'm believing that this revival is going to bring a transformation and a reformation territorially. We actually see this down in um, uh, a little bitty town down in Guatemala called Almalunga, Guatemala. Say that 10 times real fast. <laughs> Almalunga, Guatemala. Almalunga, Guatemala. Okay, it's very hard. I had to practice. Almalunga, back in the late 90s, or back in the, the early 90s, was one of, considered to be one of the poorest towns in one of the poorest nations on earth. It was a, it was a town of 20,000 people, and in this town of 20,000 people, there were five jails that were constantly overflowing with prisoners so much so that they had to actually bus prisoners to surrounding towns. Mostly domestic violence, crimes, robbery, breaking and entering, things like that. Because Almalunga was an agricultural city. Basically, they made all their money from agriculture. So they would farm the land. They would reap the harvest when it came time. And then they would send the harvest off to be sold. And back in those days, they were only sending, I think, one truck a month of produce. And that money would come back in and generally be then taken to any one number of the bars that were in town and drank away. So families were starving. Children were starving. As I said, it was probably one of the poorest of the poor. Crime was rampant. Um, uh, just, it was a devastating situation. Missions teams went down there. It didn't change. One of the reasons is because they actually worshipped an ancestral spirit. His name was Moshimon. And if you go down into Latin America, you see this little skeleton-looking guy, mostly in Mexico. But even down in Guatemala, they had this little skeleton man, and they worshipped him. Except for there was this little church... And a pastor that had this little tiny church down there that had daily prayer. And, and this pastor, I've met him. He and his wife, I don't think even stand five foot tall. They're very, very tiny indigenous people. But they would, they would meet together every single day in prayer. And they would open their prayer time by saying, Moshimon, this city does not belong to you. It belongs to Jesus Christ. And they would say that day in and day out, and they would make a stand. I'm talking about 10 to 20 people. You say, in a city of 20,000 with all those problems, what difference can that make? A lot of difference. So one day, and you wouldn't hear this part in the transformation video. How many would have seen this in the transformation video back in the 90s? You can Google everything that I'm telling you because what I'm getting ready to tell you, you're going to think is not real, unbelievable. But what ended up happening is that one day one of the intercessors came running in and she said, Pastor, Pastor, you must come. My husband is on a violent drunk and he's beating everybody up. You must come now. And the pastor, all the pastor heard was he's beating everybody up. So he's thinking, I I'll come later. And she said, no, you must come now. So he goes with her to their house, and he's tearing things ap apart, and he's slamming things around and breaking things. And the pastor steps through the door of their house, and when he stepped through the door of the house, this woman's husband turned around and looked at this pastor, this little bitty tiny pastor, and said, I am Moshimon, and this town belongs to me. Now, how many know at that point the pastor had a choice to make? How many know he could have gone, okay. <laughs> okay, number one, it's creepy when a demon speaks out of somebody, okay? And he starts backing out, but he didn't do that. No, he took another step in and he says, no, this town, Amalanga, belongs to Jesus. And I command you to come out of this man right now in Jesus' name. 
And the demon came out of that man. He hit his knees. He put his hands in the air with tears rolling down his face. He was instantly sober. And that day he gave his heart to Jesus. Amen. The most violent drunk in the town. He went out the next day, tried to beat people up to get them to convert to Jesus. The pastor had to say, no, that's, that's not how we do this, okay? So, but he started telling people about Jesus. They started winning souls. They started, uh, revival fire started spreading through this town. And within just a matter of years, let me tell you what Amalunga looked like by the transformation video of 1995 or 1996. Of the town of 20,000 people, over 19,000 of them were born again and spirit-filled. There were no more jails in the town because there was no more crime. There were no more bars in the, in the town because all the bars had been converted to churches because they needed spaces to put all these new converts. But one of the most remarkable stories about Almalunga is what happened to the town. They didn't just have spiritual revival, which were grateful enough for souls getting saved, right? We want souls saved, right? If you're not praying daily for souls to be saved, I want to challenge you to start adopting a harvester's mentality and start crying out for your family members. Start crying out for your loved ones. Start crying out for the, 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 the person behind, the, uh, the, behind the, the counter at your local grocery store. Let's start crying out for the harvest again. Amen? But they didn't just have a harvest of souls. Because what happened is that God blessed the land that they were farming. Now, wave your hand at me again if you've seen the transformation video because y'all are my witnesses because it's pretty unbelievable, isn't it? They started farming, and what used to take 20 weeks to farm was now only taking 16 weeks to farm. So they were getting more harvest per year. And the harvest that they were pulling in, the crops that they were pulling in, I kid, I kid you not, I mean, broccoli, cauliflowers, this Carrots the size of a man's hand, a man's arm, like this big around and this long. Am I telling the truth? As a matter of fact, we had a team. We sent a team down to Almalonga, and they met with this pastor, and they, they prayed, and they ministered, and they activated the gifts, and they did all the stuff that we do. And the pastor wanted to send some of the fruit back with them. They had a special agricultural dispensation that they were able to send fruit back into the, into the states. And he sent us these carrots that were no joke. They were, they were like this at the end. And they were about this, about this long. And the pastor goes, yeah, I'm sorry. We've only got these little ones left. <laughs> Seriously. And we passed them around our church. And it was just like the most supernatural thing that you've ever seen. And they're continuing in this today. Let me say that again. They're continuing in this today. Today. 